Hare Krishna. Good morning, everybody. You're in for a real treat today. Yeah, I have, I have some quotes that complete the, the four-day course, but we'll do them both today because we're leaving tomorrow morning early for Govardhan Hill. And this morning at Mangal Artik, I was noticing how I was noticing that uh, that Krishna is specifically manifested in a beautiful form, and that the devotees take trouble to dress him and attend to his form. And this is uh, his special mercy. Anugrahaya bhaktanam. So he gives mercy to the devotees. How? By Manusham Deham Astita. He manifests a form. He manifests a form uh, so that we can actually uh, behold him. He's actually named in a certain way. He has names, form, qualities, and so forth. So uh, then. Uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam says, Bhajate uh, Tadrashi Krida. He also performs pastimes. And Yashutva uh, Tatparovavet means that because of that, one becomes, uh, has something to speak about. If we don't have uh, the form of Krishna, the name of Krishna, the qualities of Krishna, there's nothing to say. There's nothing to see, nothing to do which is the idea that many people have, that spiritual life means nothing and nobody and become nothing. So one of the most important aspects of Krishna is his name. And he has many names, but each one of them, nam nam akari bahuda nija sarva shaktis tatrarpita niyamahita smarane nakala Itadrishi tava kripa bhagavan mamapi durdaiva mi drisham bihajini nanuragaha. Every one of his names has the same potency as Krishna himself. And so, because there is a, a named, we can speak about him and we can repeat his name. And if we don't have full realization of that, then there's a practice here. This is from Germany. They never smelled this before. It comes from Germany. So we're very fortunate to, to be able to have this practice. So now I'm going to uh, start by offering obeisances to His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Wow, there's lots of them. and. Um, Sorry, fellas. No more free ride. And I've picked out a, a couple of, as I said the other day, select quotes from things Prabhupada specifically said about chanting Hare Krishna. And these are kind of sutra-esque. So today I'm going to do two of them so I can finish the the course of these. And today's is from February 1970, a letter that Prabhupada wrote to Jagadish. And he writes, when we chant, we must concentrate our mind on the sound vibration. And in that way, everything will be revealed one after another, the form, the qualities, pastimes, etc., of the Lord. And this is the way of cultivating spiritual realization. I'm going to read it one more time, at least. 
when we chant, we must concentrate our mind on the sound vibration. And in that way, everything will be worth cultivating spiritual realization. What do you think? So what do you have to do to cultivate spiritual realization? On the sound vibration, what happens when you concentrate on the sound vibration? Everything, everything, everything becomes revealed one after another. What are those things that become revealed? Etc. Everything. So everything's complete in the holy name. And so Shraddha Shabde Vishras Kahe Sudra Danash Krishna Bhakti Koila Sarva Karma Kritahoi. Shraddha, the state of the heart in bhakti is that we know that Krishna and his name are non-different and everything's revealed through the name you don't have to do anything else that's the main thing so the main thing is keep the main thing the main thing so when you're chanting just concentrate on the sound vibration and hear because everything will be revealed and don't worry Masu Shaha everything's complete in the holy name it's already vetted Etan nir vidyamananam ichitam akatobayam yoginam nirpanirnitam hare namanu kirtana. It's already been decided by all the greatest teachers, so we don't have to go back and research it or doubt anything. All we have to do is trust the process. There is no other process available, by the way. In the Kali Yuga, there's only one process hare nama, hare nama, hare nama, eva kevalam. So that's it. So just, uh, we can remember this, that everything will be revealed. If it hasn't, just hang on, keep chanting, and listen to the transcendental vibration of the holy name. Okay? So let's try. We'll start with the all-important mantra, which gives us access to chanting Hare Krishna. Without the Panchatapha Ma Mantra, we have no access to chant Hare Krishna. We have no business chanting Hare Krishna without the Panchatapha Ma Mantra. So we always have to do that before we chant. Prabhupada emphasizes that ad infinitum in the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasari Gaura Bhaktivinda.
Hare Krishna. How's everybody doing? Time flies when you're having fun, right? So uh, here are a few practical points. I add the Prabhupada quotes with some practical points. And that is that vows are very important. Actually, the word vow comes from Sanskrit, vrata. And devotee actually means one who makes, or actually more importantly, keeps a vow. Devoto, devoto, vote means to make a vow. We also vote with our actions. We may say, I believe in God, but then it's like, really? So <laughs> a devotee means someone who makes a vow and then keeps it. And it's really beneficial to make vows because the Material energy presents us with a panoply of other options. And in order to not take a, a lesser path, that's the difficulty, is having options that are lesser paths, lesser goals. One has to deliberately find out what's the practice that takes one to the highest position. And then make a vow. So if you look at the word vow, it's got a V in it. It's got a little uh, wedge-like device. You can plant that somewhere and it'll, it'll hold fast. Like when you put up a tent, you put in a, a little um, tent post to hold it. And a vow also, the V in vow, it represents the, the wedge. As like we like to say, your, your pledge like vow, pledge, is your wedge. And so when you make a vow, you have this wedge and it has a small end and a big end. So whenever you feel that something's too much for you, then you can start with the smallest end and apply it and hold fast to that and keep applying just a little bit of pressure and it'll gradually open up a wider birth for you to move through. So vows are important, that's what I'm trying to say. And no vow is more important than keeping your japa strict, serious, and sincere. Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita says that japa, the chanting of the holy names, japa is the best of all yagyas. And oftentimes, when we um, make a vow, we can also uh, forget about its importance. So it's, it's helpful to go back and remember why we made the vow in the first place. And that comes back to what Prabhupada says in the quote today, and that is that by making this one vow, of chanting Hare Krishna and giving one's full mind and attention to it, then everything else will be achieved. So I'm going to read the Prabhupada quote one more time and then 
uh, just take a few reflections. So what Prabhupada said to us a minute ago is, when we chant, we must concentrate our mind on the sound vibration, and in that way, everything will be revealed one after another. The form, the qualities, pastimes, etc. of the Lord, and this is the way of cultivating spiritual realization. Sharing means caring. Please share your, your thoughts, realizations, or a question to expand the conversation. Gopal Champu. Hare Krishna. I really like the point, um, Prabhupada's quote, how um, just by focusing on the mantra, it just makes it so simple. It's like I don't have to think about this and that and, you know, do this thing and that thing. I'll just focus on the mantra and everything else will come. That's why 7-Eleven is so popular in marketing. It was a, actually an innovation where some people got together and they said, why don't we pick out 36 items that are the topmost that everyone buys? And they did extensive studies at huge grocery stores interviewing people, like, what did you buy? What was the mo most important thing? And then they got it down to these 36 items that most people buy. And then there was 10, milk, bread, soda, <laughs> and a few things like that. And th then they said, okay, we'll put that all in one place. And then it became very popular. So Lord Chaitanya says 64 items of devotional service. Out of those, here's five, here's your 7-Eleven. You go here, you get everything you need really fast. And out of that, he says, the chanting Hare Krishna, that fulfills everything. So for those who don't have time, and who does in Kali Yuga after all, make this the main thing, that strictly chanting Hare Krishna. Okay, somebody else is ready. Could you give examples of what you mean by starting with a, with a small point of the edge? Sure. And the other thing is we usually don't have this experience in daily life to only focus on sound. There is imagery and other things, you know, with the mind and processes simultaneously. Um, it's, you know, what, what would you say about that? How, how to actually bring all the rest so that the, the mind is only on the sound vibration? First thing about a small thing to start with, let's just say that you're, the room you're in right now isn't very neat and tidy. Possible? Then you think, I can't clean this room, I'm too tired, I gotta go, I gotta go to go cool today, and so forth. So then you'd say, okay, I'll just clean up one corner of the room. And you start with your desk, or if you don't have a desk, start with the sock pile in the corner or whatever it is, and just do that. And once you start, then you see like, okay, I can do a little bit at a time. Or if you think the Bhagavatam, it's too big, I can't read it. That's for other people. You just say, okay, no problem. I'll just read the preface over the next week. There's only five pages, three pages, two pages in the preface, and I'll, I'll just read one paragraph they start with the small and in that way you're moving and you get into it it doesn't matter how much you do it matters that you're doing and consistency is more important than quantity because when you do something regularly then it has a more powerful effect and Prabhupada used to say this about writing his books he said sometimes I write one sentence other times I write a few paragraphs and he told Shruti Kirti here's how I did it he said drops a day, wear the stone away. And just like with anything else, listening to the sound vibration and focusing the mind on it is a matter of practice. But in the beginning, when I'm practicing, it may seem like the mind's going here and there, but if I hear something that's fascinating, fascinating by, by definition means it connects you to the sound then it does then it's not laborious it's not uh, something that I, i'm laboring to do it becomes uh, natural so in the next quote we'll hear which now i think that moved us into the next quote 
I think it'll help to answer your question. So the next quote is from 1972. Prabhupada wrote a letter to Mohanananda. It's amazing that Prabhupada wrote these thousands of letters to individuals and gave very specific, detailed answers about how to practice devotional service, isn't it? So here's what he says. The best remedy is to sit down very tightly and chant Hare Krishna very loudly and hear for a long time until he feels himself one-minded and fixed on Krishna's lotus feet. So this is kind of answering your question because like, okay, sound, this, that, there's everything, all the variety available in the world, but this is the practice. Sit down very tightly and chant Hare Krishna very loudly and hear for a, a short time until you have to go answer your emails on the internet for a long time until he feels himself one-minded and fixed on Krishna's lotus feet. So it takes practice, but fortunately for us, Krishna and his name are non-different and his name's all attractive. So if we're able to overcome the noise for a little while just by calming down, let him settle to the bottom of the pond and just be with the holy name and be in a mood of service, it'll attract us. It's like fishing. Not that I recommend it because it's breaking the regulatory principles, but I see, I see old men fishing. It's a, it's a hobby for old men in Japan. And there's a particular place I walk in Tokyo for my morning japa when I'm there. And, you know, they just stand there fishing and they throw it out, reel it back in. And what they have in fishing is a lure. It's supposed to look like a little fish, but it has hooks on it. So they throw it out and then they reel it back in and it comes like this. And, you know, the fish are looking at it like, I don't know, Larry, what do you think? And that, you know, <laughs> finally one goes up, yeah, I think I'm going to try it. And it comes and then gotcha. gotcha. So we have to put the holy name out there like a lure. We keep putting it out and the mind's like a fish. You know how fish, they can dart off at any minute, you know? So you keep like, come on. You just very patiently, these old men, they stand there for hours until they catch a fish. So you stand there, you throw it out there, you lure it back in. And then once the mind is like, well, there's nothing else to do. Let me try this. And they bite. And then it's saying, ah! <laughs> and then it's caught on the mantra. And if you can catch your mind on the mantra by continually putting it out there until it finally catches, you know, I got it. And even for like three mantras, if you can get that, then you're successful. You've, you've grabbed the sound vibration and, and you can hold a festival that day. You invite all your friends over, have prasadam and you know, put up lights on your house and everything. I heard three mantras, I caught my mind. One time I caught it. And that, because then you know for sure that it's, this is reality, this is, this is you have to experience it for yourself. Pratyakshavagamam dharmyam. It has to be directly experienced. Uh, we'll just take one or two more. Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you so much for uh, spending time on these sessions. Um, I have been, since I heard it a few days ago, I've been holding on to the, your phrase, fearing the fade. So that has been helping me a lot in the last few days. Um, and I hope I, I mean, I can already see the, a lot of change in the way i in the way my mind, I could focus my mind on the Japa because of the, of remembering just that one, you know, one phrase. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Fear the fate. Your mind, our minds will cheat us if we let them be careful. Otherwise, it's the natural tendency of every organ in the body to shut down. As soon as you're not using it, the eyes, they shut down. All the organs, they go down. So in our spiritual practice, we have to be aware that if, if we let down, then it just naturally goes down to a lower level. So to keep it at a high level, we have to be vigilant. Okay. Maharaj, 
Yes. A quick question. Uh, Maharaj, you, you said just a few minutes ago that uh, there is no vow more important than chanting our japa strict, serious and sincerely. Uh, can you please throw a bit more light on these three words, strict, serious? It's in serious. my book. Oh. And I don't remember what I wrote, so you'll have to re <laughs> I, I actually thought about it for a long time and discussed it with uh, people much more qualified than myself, and I gave specific definitions to each, each one of those. Okay, sure, Maharaj. Thank you. I'll refer to it very well. It says, everything will be revealed. In your experience, are these everything's revealed during chanting, when you're not chanting, or both? Yeah. Uh, sometimes during, sometimes after, sometimes a long time after. We don't know actually what we're taking. It's like when you take medicine, you don't know what's in it. And you know, you might like take too much. And <laughs> I know it said one, but I'll take two. And then it's like, I'm fine, you know? And then uh, like an hour later, like, what happened to him? <laughs> he took too much. It, you know, this is strong medicine. We don't even know what we're taking. And actually, it's going in. It's, it's having its effect. So sometimes we'll chant and we'll think, oh, well, that, that wasn't, I didn't see God. I didn't see anything. But then we'll walk outside and you know, look at the washing machine and the sun coming up and all of a sudden we'll feel like, wow, I'm in a universe that's spinning and you start to have this experience of, of having a higher perspective. There, there are various ways that uh, we get the um, elevated vision and also, as we talked about yesterday, jnana and vairagya, it comes as a natural result. So you may notice it in the ways that you react to people that somebody snaps at you and, and you feel like, no, I don't think I'll snap back. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm happy. That's an effect of chanting the holy name. Uh, and also just having this um, sense of um, feeling satisfied. I mean, these are some of the natural effects that, that come from Nama Abbas chanting. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please Hare accept Krishna. my humble obeisances. So uh, uh, the first thing which came to my mind is that you said about um, trying to concentrate on the sounds. So you go to rein your mind onto the sounds. So when we're chanting softly, it becomes a bit difficult because the environmental sound overcomes that. So what would you recommend? Uh, would we chant loudly uh, in the initial till we get a little bit of control over it? and then uh, slowly, because then you can concentrate on the softness too. Please expand on that. One thing I see uh, one of my god brothers do, he holds his hand up here. This is, uh, sound engineers know this. There's different ways you can, if you put a little um, barrier, it bounces the sound back to you. So we lose a lot of sound in a room like this. It all just floats out. There's a lot of ambient noise here. and. So you can try different things, like hold your hand up, do that. Sometimes uh, devotees put in some earplugs because then you can hear yourself. Um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, try a lot of different things until you can tune in. It's like tuning a radio, a little bit here, a little bit here, and just find that place where you can hear the best. It's not always an ideal environment. Sometimes, like in Mayapur, I wonder why everyone's sitting in there enchanting because there's announcements going on. and. It's just so loud, uh, you know, and I just do the best I can to like envision the holy name. Uh, our Gopal Champu Prabhu, you see here in his hand, while he's chanting, he always has this little placard with the holy name on it. So, he, you know, he'll keep his eyes fixed on that. So you can try different things. So let's try again. And I'll just read the quote one more time, the last one, so we have it fresh in our minds from Prabhupada. He says, the best remedy is to sit down very tightly and chant Hare Krishna very loudly and hear for a long time until he feels himself one-minded and fixed on Krishna's lotus feet. We'll try again. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garadhara Shri Vasavi
Hare Krishna. Just for the last brief touch base, first want to acknowledge the young people who came in here today. What is your name, young man? Dowji. Thanks for coming in. So, uh, you know, you got up early, you came in. I'd like to acknowledge all the kids came in here to chant Japa, stalwarts. Hare Krishna. We noticed it's an austerity, and um, a lot of times when we do these uh, practices, we're not feeling like it because the body is uh, going in another direction, body, mind, everything. But when we take time to do it, uh, especially when you start young like you're doing, then it, you'll start to develop a pattern, and you'll also get a taste. So good for you. Really proud of you, kids. Hare Krishna. And um, I was also thinking that some of the concepts we're talking about seem very lofty, like one-minded, realizing Krishna and all the form names. But a more entry-level idea might be chanting until you don't feel like doing anything else at the moment. <laughs> because there are different levels of mind mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the 11th canto. And one of the levels that we tend to hang out in is where there's a lot of chatter. The mind's constantly talking, do this, do that, uh, get sick, get well, hang around and eat well. And it's always going on like that. So uh, if we're able to s stay long enough and just be peaceful enough to absorb the transcendental vibration, we can rise above that and just have a feeling like, that's okay, I don't have to listen to anything, and I, I'm fine where I am. Because the voices often say that you should be somewhere else, do something else. So if we can just get to that place in a japa period where it's like, no, I don't want to be anywhere else, I'm fine. I'm not seeing Krishna directly, but I, I actually like this better than anything else right now. <laughs> that's a good place to start with to try to get to. And if we could practice like that, that's the beginning of the wedge. You know, open it up so it's like, wow, you sat there a long time. Good for you. 
And it's like, yeah, I didn't want to be anywhere else. That's a really advanced level of japa, actually. So I have one more uh, practical section that I'll read to you. It's about how to have success and how to achieve victory in life. And actually, there's only one way. It's through the holy name. All victories come from chanting the holy name. Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtanam. This is the declaration of Lord Chaitanya. He plants a flag there and says, plant this flag. It's like, uh, you know, when, a, when a, a, a military force, you see them, they, they come in on those uh, carriers on the ocean, and then the, the front drops down and all the military runs out. The first thing they do is they plant a flag. This is our beach now. <laughs> This is our hill. So Param Vijayate means, you know, you show up like the military. The thing opens. That's how much time a warning we get at the time of death also. You're mid-sentence and all of a sudden, me. <laughs> so better make the sentence like really good. What was I saying? You plant the flag. So, you know, f for Japa, it's like a military operation against the mind. For the mind's like the enemy, so you have to conquer. We, we come in, set up everything, you sit down, and then those whatever they're called, ducks, they come in and then it opens up, storm the beachhead, plant flooding. Param Vijayate Shri Krishna Sankirtan. I'm claiming this area now for the holy name. So that's, a, that's where we get our victory. So we should plant the victory flag in our mind. And we try to hold on to wealth. Correct me if I'm wrong. I've got my mind up. Health beauty that we slip through because of the force of time. There's no way to have victory in the world except by the cross of chain and the holy name. So that's our real wealth. With everything else, it just slips through because of time. But the chanting is permanent. Every mantra is, goes to our permanent asset. So we should remember that's our real wealth. And um, then I also thought of making an invention because I noticed you get 42% more volume yeah. when you have a little add-on right there. But it, it, it takes a lot of effort to hold your hand up like that. So I'm thinking we could, our group could come out with a new product, <laughs> like Extendo ears or something. <laughs> Jaffa, you can see all the devices. You clip them on and it's like that bigger ears. <laughs> and if anybody criticizes it, we'll tell them, that Rupa Goswami said, Tunde Tandani, Tunde Tandani, Tandani, Tandani. He said, uh, when I chant, I want millions of years, so why not just have, have a little extra here? <laughs> but how did it work? Did anybody try it? It's actually yes. amazing, isn't yes. it? Yeah, we should patent that. Yeah. And, um, then, uh, no matter what else is going on in our lives, we won't have victory until we come to the point of embracing the Holy Name. We should come to terms with that. There's no way, no, uh, no success, no victory, no progress in anything until we take it in our heart that this is my main thing. This is my main source of victory, nothing else. There's nothing else to be done if we can do this. Everything else comes naturally without extraneous effort by giving one to the process of changing the Holy Name. 
And uh, if we keep chanting, we naturally feel connected and empowered. So the key t- takeaway from that section is be entirely dependent on the Holy Name. Nothing else can give us the victories that we get by chanting. And I'll read uh, Prophet's two quotes that we have for the day. I'll take t- uh, two or three last comments before we, uh, before we end. Uh, when we chant, we must concentrate our mind on the sound vibration, and in that way, everything will be revealed one after another. The form, the qualities, the pastimes, etc. of the Lord. And, it, and this is the way of cultivating spiritual realization. This means the chanting and listening. That's the way to cultivate spiritual realization. Second quote. The best remedy is to sit down very tightly and chant Hare Krishna very loudly and hear for a long time until he feels himself one-minded and fixed on Krishna's will to speak. Let's take a few last uh, comments. It's really helpful to hear the realizations of all the devotees. Radhi Shamananda Guru. Thank you. as possible. Is that what it's called? Yeah, REMs, rapid eye movement, like deeper sleep. And, and um, also it's a, it's a great victory when we're able to work through some of these patches where, you know, something comes up in the mind, there's a little storm or I feel tired and somehow or other we keep chanting and then you break through to the other side and you're able to feel like, oh, I can keep going now. That, that's helpful to, to um, bolster our strength and know that actually I, I can 
conquer this and, and keep going. Prabhu, one more? Yeah. I was also thinking about uh, what you mentioned about vows. And uh, when you said about making like a small, doing like small sustainable, uh, like a rut, I was also thinking about how going to sleep early is really important and, 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 and getting that enough sleep. But that can also be like a rut, making sure you go to bed at the, an early time so you have enough rest in the morning to do a nice sadhana. You have noticed the most uh, productive devotees are ones who are very strict about when they go to bed because you can't beat sleep. It's very difficult. It's the hardest thing to get past. And the only way to do it is to make sure that you go to bed earlier. Okay, yes. One, two. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, I would like to share a magical experience is that I feel I have noticed that my uh, chanting is very quicker in this place rather than at home. And it is not just the location. In any of the temples when I have been chanting, it is much quicker. The rounds I finish very quickly. So I don't know if this is the potency of this place. And uh, another thing is that uh, I have taken a vow that I will be doing the I will be doing the 16 rounds, um, which I was doing earlier. But for some reason, there was uh, not that consistency. But now, with with this uh, vow, with this uh, day on this day, sorry, uh, I would I will take a vow that I will do the 16 rounds. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, um, thank you so much for spending this time with us because it's a constant inspiration, all your quotes and your um, realizations and everything. So I was um, trying to relate to this fearing the fade since you had told it, I think, on the first day. And today when you said that um, health, wealth and other couple of things, they just, they are not anyways permanent, they will slip with time. So for me, keep putting those two things together, it's going to be an impetus to my mind to um, constantly, to curb my mind actually, that whatever topics I'm thinking about, usually every one of us, I mean specifically me, I'm thinking about things because I want to do things perfectly. I want to finish my, my job, my duties, but then they are anyways temporary, they are anyways going to um, slip with time. I'm not going to have control on it, so I don't want to fade the chanting for it. So this thing that you told today is, is going to help me bring the fear for fading the chanting during the chanting. And also, when you said that a devotee, I didn't know the definition of devotee, that a devotee is one who takes vows. Keeps vows. Keeps vows. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for clarifying that. So, I think when I call myself a devotee, I'm going to constantly remind myself about this, which is again going to help a lot. That if, if I dare to call myself a devotee, then I have to learn to keep my vows. So thank you very much. Thank Hare you. Well. So that, that brings us to the conclusion of our Make Japa Great Again series. There's a lot more we can do if we meet again next time for this type of uh, program. But in the meantime, it's helpful to stay in touch with different teachings about Japa because it's uh, it's a discipline and we need coaching. Everybody needs coaching. There are several books written on this. There are instructions in the Harinam Chintamani. So I highly recommend cultivate that knowledge. If you have an opportunity to go to a Japa retreat, go. Because those will keep you um, at a high level. You'll, you'll benefit from those. And if you just make it this primary of primary importance, the good japa, whatever you have to do to keep it going and at, at the highest level and keep improving, 
If you do that, then everything else will take care of itself. All other things fall into place. And when we don't do that, then everything else tends to come apart at the seams and not work very well. So on this day, dear Srila Prabhupada, dear Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Sri Panchatattva, Sri Sri Radha Madan Mohan, if you so desire, please empower us to always keep vigilant practice in our chanting of the holy names, especially our japa, finishing our minimum of 16 rounds and please let us always try to improve each day as we chant and please let us develop a service attitude for the holy name. Thank you for considering our request. Om Tat Sat. Everyone who agrees with this prayer in whole or in part, please say Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.